After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the casting procedure of tar track marks, preservation of two dimensional footprint, forensic investigation of these track marks. Introduction A capable crime scene investigator or reaching the crime scene try to recognize, collect various type of evidence to solve the crime by identifying the person who has committed this crime. These evidences in the form of foot or footwear and tire impressions have to be preserved properly to be used in the court of law as such. Preservation of footwear evidence. The footwear evidence could be preserved either by taking photographs or by preparing cast in case of three dimensional prints depending upon the surface on which they are present or by lifting in case of two dimensional prints, dust print we can call them. Photographing the track impression all the cases before attempting to collect track marks, it is mandatory to record them first with the help of notes, sketches and then with photography. The photographs need to be taken both at a distance from the track marks and close to it. In a photograph taken from distance, the location of the number of track mark should be fixed with respect to some fixed subject or landmarks. Then to record every detail of the track mark, close up photographs should be taken by putting either one or preferably two scales one horizontal and other vertical along with the track marks. Close up photos should indicate size, shape and any irregularity in the form of wear marks. While taking photographs or to avoid distortion, the following precautions should be taken. The lens of the camera should be kept parallel to the track marks. Proper arrangement should be made to get greater depth of field and all the important points should be in sharp focus. Identification marks should be put along with the track marks. Proper lighting arrangement should be made. A tripod is suggested for the most close-up photography. Although large format cameras, example 4 into 5 or 2 inch formats allow for larger negatives, but 35 mm cameras are most widely used for crime scene work and produce good acceptable results. The quality of photographic films should be very good. Footwear and tire impressions require film that can capture finer details. Therefore, Fine grained films are best suited for this purpose. Prints can be clicked either with black and white or colored films. High resolution digital camera can provide good results for track mark impressions examination. Before taking photographs, any extraneous matter that may have fallen into the impression after it was formed should be cleaned away with the help of tweezers. If it is not possible to carry out this cleaning without disturbing the details of the impression, it should be omitted. Materials trampled into the impression such as leaves or grass should not be removed because they form part of impression and no detail will be found under them. Careless removal of a trampled blade of glass can destroy parts of the impression. If a foot impression has been found in snow, it may be difficult to get a clear picture of it. Hard snow may be dusted with aluminum powder which gives a clear picture. Cast of footwear impressions is generally made with dental stone powder. Other materials include paraffin, sulfur and silicone rubber can be utilized but are less frequently used. Now, casting procedures for track marks. 
When three dimensional track marks such as a footprint or tire track is encountered, a positive cast of it should be made. Several types of casting materials are commercially available like plaster of Paris and dental stone which are a type of gypsum or calcium sulphate etc. But plaster of Paris is one of the most commonly preferred casting material at the crime scene because it is inexpensive, easy to use and best to record the details of the marks exactly the way they were in reality. Another advantage of plaster of Paris is that it solidifies very quickly. Detailed steps involved in the procedure for making cast with the most common casting material plaster of Paris are first point. After photography of the track marks with and without a scale, examine the area containing track marks carefully. Any precaution thought necessary to protect the integrity of the track marks must be taken. Foreign matters or loose pieces of leaves, if any, should be vigilantly removed without disturbing the surface of the mark. Any accumulated water or liquid, if available, should be removed with a pipette or plastic syringe. The impression is prepared for casting if necessary, particularly when three-dimensional impression is in loose, dry sand or solid, the surface must be prepared by spraying shellac or lacquer solution onto a cardboard deflector held above the mark at a 45 degree angle so a sprayed liquid falls onto the pattern surface by gravity rather than being propelled by a potentially disruptive jet of gas. The shellac or lacquer will harden the surface of the mark by binding the loose particles of soil once dried make it suitable for casting. If the pattern is in very dry, firm dirt, it should be sprayed with light oil. A physical barrier to restrict the flow of the plaster must be set up around the impression, which means with aluminium frame, commercially manufactured metal frames are available for this purpose. But any material, cardboard, wood, strips, metal frame that will retain plaster and confine it to the immediate area of the mark will suffice. A little ingenuity with commonly available materials will solve most containment problems. Now the image is showing containers and frames used for preparation of cast. The image is showing sunken footprint. Image is showing frame placed around the footprint. Figure is showing casting procedures image is showing completion of footprint cast figure is showing various stages in the preparation of the cast of foot or footwear impressions the recent methods for lifting wet footprints impression by making use of dental stone or gypsum and liquid silicone commonly known as microsil now preservation of two dimensional footprints Photography is always one of the best means to preserve the footprints, particularly the two-dimensional dust prints. After this, one of the following methods should be applied to preserve it by making cast, recovering and preserving the object on which the footprint is made. Now, the footprints are often found on objects stepped on by the criminal while entering in the dark through a window. If the window is broken, then all fragments of glass should be examined. This type of print is usually best detected by allowing illumination from one side at low angle. Rubber heels and soles leave good prints on glass. Detailed prints are also found on paper or cardboard that may be scattered about the room during a safe bulgari. All such loose objects bearing prints should be carefully preserved and sent to the laboratory for examination. Now the electrostatic lifting. Ready-made kits are available to lift dust prints with electrostatic lifters which pick up dust prints onto mylar coated foils by means of static electricity. This procedure has applications in certain situations in which suspects had walked on tile hard floor. 
A special lifter is preferred whenever dust or a dust-like substance holds the print from the shoe. A smeared foot marks. The lifter is a sheet of black rubber with a slightly sticky surface that is pressed against the print, picking up a replica of the whole print. Oblique light photography under laboratory conditions bring about this dust print to a contrast often better than that observed in the original print. If a sufficiently large fingerprint lifter is available, it may be used instead of the special lifter. Care must be taken not to stretch the rubber lifter because the dust images may become distorted. Now, lifting with photographic paper. This technique may be employed when special lifters are not available. Black, exposed, developed, fixed and washed or white, fixed and washed photography paper can be used as determined by the color of the material in the print. The paper is damped with water or dilute ammonia laid emulsion side over the print and beaten against the print with a stiff brush or clapped with the palm. When the whole surface has been thoroughly beaten, the paper is removed and laid out to dry. Enhancement of prints present on any transparent or colored substrate. Various types of enhancers may often be employed to develop the prints if present on different substances or any type of intervening medium or if they are almost latent. For example, conventional and fluorescent fingerprint developers can also be used as a mechanical enhancer when the footprint or foot marks or tire marks are found on transparent substance like glass doors or windows and white colored background materials like tiles, floors, etc. Similarly, there is another set of enhancers called chemical enhancers which include the blood enhancement chemicals and residue materials enhancers. The former class of enhancers comprise of patent blue, fusion acid, luminal, amido black and leuco crystal violet that can be used to improve the quality of prints stained with blood. And the later one consists of chemicals like bromophenol blue, saffron, potassium thiocyanate, diaflosin, and 8-hydroxyquinolone. All these can be employed for enhancing the prints which have been generated by any exogenous material. Now, obtaining standards for prints for comparison from a suspect. When the original prints are from footwear, the examiner has to obtain the shoe print. Subject is requested to carefully step onto a sheet of tracing paper or acetate sheet after inking. While taking prints of barefoot, the foot is blackened by pressuring it against a thin layer of printing ink. In order to get a true picture of the sole, the footprint can be taken in the following four positions. First is normal standing position. Second, standing position with pressure outside the foot. Third, with pressure inside and finally when walking. This can also be applied to stocking feet. Another method for obtaining known footprint footwear exemplars can be obtained by using talcum powder and black carbon paper. A thin coating of talc is spread on a sheet of newspaper placed with talc side up on top of about 10 sheets of newspaper that acts as a cushion. Then the suspect is made to walk over the newspaper containing talc with shoes. The talc covered shoe is then pressed onto the carbon paper. The carbon paper is similarly cushioned with about 10 sheets of newspaper. The resulting print is photographed using high contrast copy film. The developed negative will show a positive reproduction of the impression that can be superimposed over a negative from the crime scene. Now the forensic investigation of track marks. The whole investigation of track marks follows two major laws forensic science relies upon, which means law of individuality and principle of exchange or Locard's exchange principle. Whenever an item of footwear or a tire touches a substrate, it results in direct transfer of both class and individual characteristic. The suspected footwear or tire can be compared 
with them in order to subsidize any linkage or to eliminate from an allied crime. Now the class characteristics. Those characteristics which are common to a particular group and which differentiate the members of that particular group from those of another group are termed as class characteristics. These comprise of type of footwear like sneaker, loafer, fleet, chappal, etc. Physical size and shape, design or model of the footwear and the brand name, tag or logo of manufacturer. In case of tire marks treated with or tire stances, depth of pattern when present, deep set in mind, design and logo of manufacturing company are considered as class characters. In case of bare or naked foot marks, length of feet, width of feet and curvature of heel constitute the class characteristics. Now the individual characteristics. The characteristics that especially belong to one particular type and are not present in any other are termed as individual characteristics. These include wear and tear marks present on insole as well as outside sole of footwear. Various features like scratches, cuts, holes, etc. retained by the shoe outsole, any material adhered to the outsole for a long time that includes gum, nails, pins, threads used while stitching, repairing a torn sole and most importantly the markers art like any patchwork if the footwear is handmade. Individual characters in case of tire marks are almost similar to those found in case of footwear marks. Wear and tear marks, random cuts, holes made by sharp embedded pebbles or nails etc. are the important individual marks. In both the cases any extraneous materials like sand, hair, fiber, paint, chips etc. found embedded over the pattern should never be outlooked as they may act as an important corroboratory evidence. Ditch pattern present either on the tarsals of feet or on the tali, shape of the bulb line or zanzari and arc of feet are considerable individual features in case of naked or bare foot marks. A side by side match also called point by point analysis of the cushion and the standard track marks is performed by making use of either the photographs or tracing of the plaster of Paris cast of the same. Composite matching by using a comparison microscope is another way of comparing the quotient and standard samples. Presence of sufficient identifying characteristic ends up with a positive identification. As such, there is no fixed number as per the characteristic that should be looked for. Comparison is based upon the class and individual characteristic as discussed earlier. The figure is showing a footwear impression and the stud allied to have made the print along with the scale. Analysis of walking pattern or gait pattern is an important aspect of track marks which has great application in crime investigation. It consists of a series of footprints or footwear impressions made by a person while walking or running and is highly individualistic and results obtained are reproducible thereby qualifying as one of the important forensic evidence. It includes the direction line, the walking line, the foot line, the foot angle, the principal angle, the step length and the step width etc. Next is the direction line, an imaginary straight line indicating the direction of walk or run. Next is the walking line, a straight or zigzag line produced as a result of placing one's feet or footwear along the direction line. Next is foot line, a tangent indicating the inclination of foot with respect to the directional line. Foot angle, an angle between the directional line and the foot line. Next is the principal angle, it is the sum of two feet angles which means angle between foot lines of two feet. Next is the step length, a straight line joining the heels of two successive feet. Next is step width, the distance between parallel drawn to inner sides of both feet. Now the particular figure is showing outlines of gait pattern. Determination of height, age and sex of the 
depositor can be very well performed by analyzing gate patterns of the same. Now the summary. A capable crime scene investigator on reaching crime scene try to recognize collects various types of evidences to solve the crime by identifying the person who have committed the crime. These evidences in the form of footwear and tire impressions have to be preserved properly to be used in the court of law. In all the cases before attempting to collect the track marks, it is mandatory to record them first with the help of notes, sketches and then with photography. Photographs need to be taken both at a distance from the track marks and close to it. When three dimensional track marks such as a footprint or tire track is encountered, a positive cast of it should be made. Several types of casting materials are commercially available like plaster of Paris and delta stone which are a type of gypsum or calcium sulphate etc. Next is the individual characteristics in case of tire marks are almost similar to those found in case of footwear marks. Wear and tear marks, random cuts, holes made by sharp embedded pebbles or nails etc. are the important individual marks. Next, analysis of walking pattern or gait pattern is an important aspect of track mark which has great application in crime investigation. It consists of a series of footwear or footprints impressions made by a person while walking or running and is highly individualistic and results obtained are reproducible thereby qualifying as one of the important forensic evidence.